Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here. I appreciate the input that I've received from some folks concerning how I should possibly prepare for this battle. I think I'm ready to go. And uh, this is the Battle of Gaines Mill, June 27th, 1862. It's one of the battles of the Seven Days Campaign, which took place between McClellan and Lee in the outskirts of Richmond. I am outnumbered about 62,000 to 49,000. Now that number for the Confederates is actually pretty much exactly what they had historically at the Battle of Gaines Mill. This is one of those rare battles where the Confederates had a significant advantage in numbers. Union only had a little more than half of that. So I've actually got a bigger army than what the Union had at this battle. So we'll see how this all plays out. I feel pretty good about my chances with the forces that I have. However, most of my reinforcements are kind of uh, not real strong units. There are a lot of new rookie units. Uh, first things first, though, I am going to back the heck out of that line right there, and I'm going to pull back to this position. It's always important to note what the victory conditions are and aren't for each of these battles, and there is no point to holding that line up there as the Union. It doesn't add anything to the victory. Uh, these are the positions I need to hold in order to win, and of course the battle is going to the battlefield is going to open up more on this side. But for now, I just need to get out of here. I think maybe what I'll do is I'll have these guns follow the road. Hopefully that'll get them going a little faster. So while I'm doing the big pullback here, let's talk a little bit about the Battle of Gaines. Where are these guys going? We'll talk a little bit about the Battle of Gaines Mill. As I already mentioned, uh, significant advantage in numbers for the Confederates at this battle, which is quite unusual. I'm going to pull a couple of these units over this way. Gaines Mill also was the battle at which the largest frontal assault of the entire war took place. You know, when you think of large assaults by groups of soldiers, you think of places like uh, Franklin for the Confederates or Pickett's Charge. Uh, Franklin and Pickett's Charge combined barely equals the charge that took place at Gaines Mill by the Confederates. There were about 32,000 men that were in this frontal assault, the largest of the war. And it was in this battle, in that attack, that uh, John Bell Hood's Texas Brigade kind of really earned their fame. Uh, they were one of the units that helped break the Union lines in that battle. Uh, Texas Brigade was the 1st, 4th, and 5th Texas, the 18th Georgia, and Hampton's Legion. So it wasn't even all Texas units. Uh, but it was primarily made of Texas men, so that was why it got that name. This was also Robert E. Lee's first major victory as a commander in the Civil War. Certainly was not his last. So we'll go ahead and speed things up here a little bit. So right now he's uh, got fewer men than me on the field. It's obviously not going to stay that way. I'm going to look and see. I'm actually thinking here. I'm going to get some of the units with the 18, the Springfield 1855s. There's some Harper's Ferries there. I'm going to put them on the front lines. They've got better weapons. slow things down while I figure this all out. Don't have a lot of artillery on the field yet, just the one unit of Napoleons. Okay. This was also the battle, uh, the first time 
in the Civil War where both sides used observation balloons to help direct troops and kind of see what the enemy was up to. Uh, the peninsula is where those really made their debut, and it was at this battle that both sides used them for the first time at the same time. Not sure why I've got O'Hare back that far to bring him up. All right, we're still waiting on the enemy. Of course, the Civil War is where the Union first um, started issuing uh, the Medal of Honor. And, of course, at that time, there were a lot of them issued because you could get them for things like capturing the enemy's flag, which took a lot of bravery, but uh, I don't think the standard during the Civil War was as high as it was for other, other wars, subsequent wars. There were seven medals of honor issued for Union soldiers at the Battle of Gaines Mill, including one for uh, General Dan Butterfield, who was best probably known, I think he was a brigade commander at this time, in fact I think the, uh, the 20th Maine with Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain was uh, of course, Chamberlain wasn't commanding the 20th Maine yet, but they were in Butterfield's brigade at one time. But uh, Butterfield wrote Taps, so um, probably much more famous for that bugle call that he wrote than for anything he did during the war. All right, we're still waiting. Have not seen the enemy. All right, we'll go ahead and drop out, and we will come back when there's actually some fighting to happen here. All right, so we are into phase two of the battle now. We're finally starting to see some Confederate forces. Uh, he's now got the advantage in numbers on the battlefield by about uh, 7,000, eight, almost 8,000 men. So now my artillery is going to open up here. He's got some pretty big brigades. And of course, some of mine are really spread out, and I'm not crazy about that. He looks like he's shifting over to my right. I think I'm going to... Leave some skirmishers and start shifting myself. Of course, this battle, even though it was a Confederate victory, it was a bloody, bloody battle. The Union lost about a fifth of the men that they engaged, uh, but the Confederates actually lost more just because they were attacking. Probably could have been a much greater Confederate victory if not for some pretty poor for uh, a pretty poor for yeah, performance on the part of Stonewall Jackson. This was not his finest hour by any means. In fact, I would argue it was probably one of the worst battles for him. He had a hard time getting his troops coordinated, getting them to where they needed to be and in the right time. Uh, they got lost a few times. They got harassed along the way. And it was in large part because of the mishaps by Jackson that Lee's major, that 32,000-man assault, didn't really go off until about 7 p.m. And, of course, by that point, you've only got a couple of hours of daylight left. So it could have been, I think, much more complete a victory otherwise. Get Harrison's battery over here. Where are those? Oh, those are the 24 pounders. And I'm going to bring O'Hare over here. Okay. So, really, not much as far as engagement goes so far. He's just trying to shift over to get around on my flank. We'll go ahead and speed things up for now.
when my reinforcements come up, I'll bring them in on my right here. Because he's going to keep shifting further and further to my right. I'm going to drop some skirmishers off here. Put them in these woods. Alright, here come my reinforcements. Way down here. Of course, that includes my cavalry brigade. Or cavalry, cavalry division, I should say. Alright, let's see how Shaw's doing. He's lost 100 men, but he's got 200 kills. I got plenty of backup for him. So I don't know when he's going to get his reinforcements from down this way, but I think it probably not yet. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to advance these two brigades toward Greg. I'm counting on the fact that Greg's the only unit there. I'm hopefully going to distract him with this cavalry here. It seems to be working. So he got this unit isolated out here, which is exactly... Oh, here come more men. Okay. Exactly the kind of target that I want for this swarm of cavalry, uh, melee cavalry that I have here. Especially if they're distracted by other people so they can't get a volley into them. Appler got there a little too soon. Oh boy. I didn't time that very well. So Appler got tore up before the other units could get into place. Oh, here we go. Let's move Archer up a little bit, move Appler up. Do I have two units commanded by Appler? I do. Doesn't seem like it's that common a name. Sorry, buddy. Didn't mean to have you kind of charge all by yourself there. All right. Need to resupply the artillery. Alright guys, I think we've done enough for now. Okay, so 900 casualties for me, a little over 2,000 for him. Supplies in pretty good shape right now, mainly just the artillery. I'm hesitant to march across and try to get into his flanks because I know he's going to be getting more men.
Oh, here comes another assault. The Vermont boys will take care of them, not a problem. I think it's probably time I name some more of my brigades. We'll start throwing some names in here soon, like the Iron Brigade, etc. All right, it's time for a little exploration up here. We've got about 37 minutes left. I'm going to move this artillery up. We're going to go ahead and send O'Hare. Let's reattach his skirmishers. I think I've got the all clear to come up and hit Anderson on his flank. I don't see anything else up here. Here come. Yep. All right. That's what I was afraid of. There is another division coming down from up here. I'll get one volley in on Anderson, then I got to pull these guys back. Pull Shaw out. We're going to put Pond in. All right, now I got to pull O'Hare back. Here comes the attack on my flank.
I'm actually going to hold the cavalry right here because if he does come in with a melee assault, I need the support. That's a lot of men coming down. 12,000 men right here. I've only got about eight on this line. All right, last part of the battle. I think. I think this is the last part. All right, he's going to have a big advantage in numbers now, at least till I get my reinforcements. He's got me by about 20,000 men. Pull out of there, Nicholas. Come on. He's pushing along the whole line right now. Coming all, oh boy. Pawn just got knocked off. That's okay. He was stretched out pretty thin, so that's not the worst thing in the world that he got knocked out of the line. All right, Pond, you don't have to run all the way back to uh, Williamsburg. Now we're going to have to pull Tuttle back. He's starting to take some direct fire. All right, I'm going to bring my cavalry around. Maybe we can get around him here or at least cause a distraction. And I've still only lost about 2,200 men, 2,300 to his 7,000. And here come reinforcements. Here's all these rookie units, a lot of them using farmers, muskets, and led by majors and lieutenant colonels. Mostly majors. That's okay. They'll do the job. Yeah, you're not grabbing my supplies, dude. Nice try.
this battlefield is actually the uh, the same battlefield where the Battle of Cold Harbor was fought two years later. In fact, a lot of times you'll see, well, not a lot of times, but occasionally you'll see Gaines Mill referred to as the first Battle of Cold Harbor. Casualties were actually pretty similar as well between the two battles at Cold Harbor. All right, he's starting to hit me pretty hard here. I don't know how my, oh, my general just advanced ahead of these guys, that's all. Peck him up through the clearing here. All right, he's starting to break my right flank. I'm getting these guys up here just in time. All right, Price, pull him out of there. O'Hare, get up here and cover them. Hour and a half to go. All right, he pushed me back over here too. Jeez, just a lot of men. Once these guys reform, I can come up here and hit Pickett's brigade. We got a resupply over here. I'm gonna send Stewart to this side, Smith as well. We'll get Otis Schweitzer up here. I'm gonna send the cavalry over there too. You don't want to get into that, dude. Back out. Back out. All right, so he's got about a 4,000-man advantage on the field at the moment. And a lot of mine aren't into position yet. Things are stabilized on my right for sure. Now I just need to stabilize the center and the left. up a little bit, Archer. Is 
Yeah, we can move the line up over here now. Jeez, he's throwing everything he's got at me. I should expect this, though. It's Gaines Mill, and it was a pretty major frontal assault, so Confederates are doing exactly, exactly what they did. I'll pull Hampton's Legion out of here. I think things have stabilized for the most part. Oh, Schaefer, no, 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 no. You better get out of there quickly. I still took a volley to the rear. He's going to come at me one more time. All right. Numbers are even now. I've closed the whole gap that he, uh, the advantage that he had. Stonewall Jackson has finally arrived on the battlefield. And as you can see, just like in real life, basically too late to really have any major effect on the outcome. I'm definitely going to be happy to see this one come to an end, even though I'm doing pretty well. Run, Appler Skirmishers, run! Alright. So, Final outcome here. I was outnumbered by about 15,000, 14,000 men. Of course, I had cavalry, so maybe not quite that much. But there you have 8,100 casualties for me. Probably closer to 9,000 when you count the artillery and cavalry. Uh, 22,000 for him. So a good day for me. 
took out about a third of his entire available force, although I'm sure he's going to get a lot more. But the nice thing here is that we got a lot of these low-ranking officers promoted up to higher rank, so that kind of stabilizes that low rank I had going for a lot of my troops. So now let's take a look, first of all. Um, he lost 22,000, and he's basically getting the same amount, so it's kind of a wash. We're going to go right into Malvern Hill, which is another uh, grand battle. We have them back-to-back -back here in the uh, Seven Days campaign. And again, I'm going to be defending, but this time with a smaller force, but it's a narrower passageway. It's actually a much better position to, to defend, I believe. Uh, of course, he's got thirty, almost 34,000 men to start. I honestly would rather that number did not climb significantly. So anything I can do to keep that from scaling up too much, I think will be helpful. Uh, let's take a look here. Nice thing is if I go one more, now I've got 2,500 for the max in my brigades. Uh, go politics again. So let's take a look. I didn't look at what I captured and things of that nature because I know it probably wasn't anything special. Alright, so I'm just curious, before I start maxing out everything here, I know I'm going to have 15 and 15, which is basically the number of brigades I have right now. Right now I've got him by about 6,000 men just with the troops I have available to me. Let's see how that changes if I start... Oh my gosh, no, I don't think we'll do that. Not for 70,000. It's because it's all those palmettos. No, I don't want to take them down to, two, to one star either. And that's 100,000. That's not going to work either. All right. First things first, we're going to buy some guns. Man, that gets awfully expensive. I'm just going to have to be content with two stars for now on some of these units. So I had him by what, about 6,000, I think it was. And let's see where this takes it to. Just with those couple of uh, changes. So we'll see how much he's getting scaled. Okay, now it is still about 6,000. So it seems like no matter what I do, that's about where the balance is going to be. But considering I'm on the defensive, that's not a bad thing because it means I can inflict more casualties. So I'll go ahead and finish getting myself refit and ready for that battle. Um, I'm not going to do all of that right here in front of you right now just because there's a lot to be done. And I'm going to play with things a little bit to figure out how best to do it. But as always, I welcome your comments, your criticisms, your observations, any and all things. Uh, if you would just want to have a discussion about the battle itself, that's great too. I love to talk history. And uh, by the time this video goes up, I probably will have uploaded a new uh, channel update question of the week. So check that out. Uh, I'll put a link to it in the uh, at the end of this video. As always, thanks for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't already, please consider doing so. If you'd hit that thumbs up, I would appreciate it greatly. And we will see you again soon.